hard to put into words what the last two days have been like. The past four days, the past five days, really. I came to Bali thinking that I had this book to write. I still think and know I have a book to write. Why I came here was for this event that is ending tonight and I'll be leaving tomorrow. Yesterday was a breakthrough day for me. I so clearly heard and saw my, my vision. I was partnered with someone and talking about nature connection and bringing that to some sort of online online course and there's this catchphrase that came to me rounding into your purpose through nature connection just blew me open I was like what I wrote the whole script my thoughts and that was just incredible then I went to a talk about crypto and blockchain understanding these digital currencies as well as the blockchain as a software that is revolutionizing everything we do. So I added that layer of understanding. I had a, a little bit of understanding about crypto prior to, but this felt like I understood the technology much better behind it and how I could actually use it to fund projects, how I could use utility tokens on a website to then um, impact how I do business, how I um, choose to keep people invested in my website, what I have to offer. Then, that evening, yet which would be yesterday evening, someone here is working with this idea of grief and how redefining how we how we grieve how we um, choose to care for people who are grieving as someone who is is and has been for almost two years taking care of someone witnessing them slowly lose themselves, slowly forget who it is that they are. It's been an interesting process of figuring out how I can 
show up for him, how I can show up for myself. And then being able to witness how other people deal with this process of mine that I've taken on in, in some pretty big way. You know, so much of what we think we should do when we encounter someone who's grieving is just our insecurity and our inability to just be with someone in the present moment without any need to fix or change their experience. So the dominant response that has been communicated to me once someone asks, hey, how you doing? And I start responding, you know, the daily things that I'm, that I'm going through. The immediate response is, well, what's the solution? How can I fix that? How can I solve your problem? And the idea is that we don't have a problem. There's nothing wrong with grieving or feeling like, You know, there's there's a loneliness aspect or there's a disconnection. Today you just didn't feel like you were seen or heard by anyone and yet you were just continuing to show up for someone else. So then, relating this to depression and how we are choosing to deal with it now, we see depression as a problem, as something that nobody should be experiencing that we need to fix. And while I do believe that certain people, depending on where they're at, absolutely, definitely need some type of professional help. But the stigma around it now is that you shouldn't be depressed. You shouldn't have lows. You, you know, should just... You know, the medication that they give you not only, um, you know, makes you less susceptible to have lows, but it also makes you susceptible to not having any real true highs. And so you're just kind of numbing yourself out. But getting back to the point, we, as a society, feel like depression is wrong. And I think this conversation that I had with someone was really validating. And, you know, there's a humanness to um, experiencing pain, to... Um, dealing with depression. We all go through challenging times. We all suffer in many different ways. That's what makes us human. Thinking about medicating someone who's depressed is that we're, we're taking away their ability to turn that that depression to turn that uh, pain into their most powerful gift, into their most powerful 
offering to the world, their most powerful transformation, growth. When do we grow most? In these types of situations where we are, where we find our strength in the darkness. Moving on from that topic. I spent my morning today downloading a lot of what happened yesterday, all the stuff I just described. And writing down, doing some internet research, um, reaching out to a couple virtual assistants to see how I could really outsource some of my time so that I can focus more on the curriculum and less on maybe uh, the research or the emailing or the um, getting contacts to reach out to, getting leads. I was feeling really empowered and just feeling like, wow, I need to bring this into the world. And then I had a call with two people in the forest therapy sphere who I see as mentors, as people who I can reach out to for assistance. And I had been bringing up this conversation of, of old souls and elders and what their role is. I don't think I want to get into my thoughts on that for now, but I was looking more for a discussion than necessarily feeling like I needed assistance, but um, these two people jumped on a call with me and I was just processing a lot of trying to understand nature connection and how to bring it into a safe online space so that it can reach more people instead of it being one to one or one to ten it could be one to many one to uh, a thousand however many it will end up reaching and i don't know if any of you have experienced counsel but there's these circles that happen within a forest therapy walk and these walks are really powerful and these circles sometimes also can feel a little bit like a council it's giving everyone a voice to be heard and seen if they heard if they want to uh, speak something, but absolutely seen because, you know, being silent is also a way of, of expressing yourself and being seen by others. And so I had this long conversation about why that might not be an authentic way to to connect and how we can um, use the night, use, you know, sunset to morning, any time within um, the darkness to do this type of work, to do the work of 
coming together with our dark gifts, with whatever's going on in our lives, being able to have a space to process them, but to also have it in the structure of a forest therapy experience where it's um, connecting to nature, a little bit of more of a guided meditation experience at the beginning, and then looking at the stars and just thinking about the spaces that have to be created in order for people to first of all share what's going on, what's real for them in the moment. So making sure to ask, hey, you know, let's go around and see what what you need in order to feel safe. And so I was processing a lot of what came up and again it just felt really clear that I needed to bring this nature connection experience to more people, many more people. I have this capacity to combine uh, business and marketing and understanding that if you have something of value but don't know how to get it out into the world, what use is it? The last thing I'm going to share before I kind of wrap it up. I was at dinner and was talking to someone about virtual reality and AI, artificial intelligence. I had experienced a, uh, a, a VR experience, I guess, about a year ago. And I was very intrigued, super interested in how this could impact people in nursing homes who can't necessarily get outside, but you could put this VR headset on and you could have a similar effect of watching nature, of exploring nature but not actually having to go outside, having the health benefits, most of them, of being outside indoors. So having this dinner conversation with someone who is working in VR space and understands it really well started talking about how our houses are soon just going to be boxes with a fridge, with um, a toilet, a shower, a bed, and that's it. Why? Because we are going to be living our reality is going to be blended with virtual reality. There will be no difference. When I had my headset on, my brain could not tell what was real or not. The only thing that made me click out of it was say, you see something passing by you and then you like try to go out and touch it and you can't. But the thing is, is that your most of how you experience the world, like 80% is visual. And so you think, 
oh, you know, there's five senses, there's many more senses. And you will know that you're definitely in this VR space. And the truth is, you, you don't know. And what's happening in the next couple years is kind of mind-blowing to me. This technology is not far out. This technology is happening right now. This, this transformation, this completely redefining how we experience our lives, it's going to happen within the next five years. Cell, ph cell phones were not invented until 11 years ago, I think. Just think about that. The first computers were massive. They took up, you know, huge warehouses to have a supercomputer. And now we have these phones that are way more powerful and look how small they are. And so you think in that span of 10 years, all that progressed. Within the next couple of years, these iPhones are gonna be long gone. Thinking about AI and artificial intelligence. This person was talking about how in the not too distant future, Siri's almost already there, I guess. You are going to have this artificial intelligence within your phone, within whatever technology it is that you're using and it's programmed to you and almost instantaneously it will become smarter than you. It's going to start um, responding to emails as it has recognized that Maybe you typically respond. Its ability to process information and think is far superior than we could ever, ever be able to, to create, to think. So thinking about this, is just this realization that inevitably machines, artificial intelligence, are going to take over the world and completely redefine how we live our lives. The thought of us slowly losing our ability or our our interest in being emotional beings being human recognizing that that capacity is going to be out the window in the not too distant future is absolutely mind-blowing to me, but also so real. Like as much as it feels, feels like that's crazy, that's not true, it makes sense. 
it makes sense to me that this technology is just incredible. It's so, so powerful and it's moving at a pace that's just really hard to comprehend and to keep up with. In China, they are pouring billions and trillions of dollars into VR because once everyone has VR in their homes, they can track what everyone is doing through artificial intelligence and they can then program human beings however they they want them to be and if you know they see someone who's doing three percent you know what they would consider bad they can set a threshold of say okay if if they you know on their scale somehow they get to 50 percent bad or 80 percent bad they could then you know, decide, oh, time to go get them. It feels like the matrix. It feels like this is the world that has manifested. And so as someone who is so interested in technology and moving forward and thinking about the impact I want to have, this same person was, was just sharing that you know, you have this interest in VR and helping people in nursing homes connect to their environment, help them uh, have a better life, creating, recreating their home space so that they can put the VR headset on and just feel like they're at home or um, showing something with their grandkids in it, um, showing something of you know, their, their favorite place to go, the beach, the forest, um, whatever it might be. The idea that maybe I need to be focusing on um, creating that vision is so new to me, just a couple hours, but also incredibly in line with, you know, what I now know to be true about the world technology and, and where we're headed. It's not that I don't want to do nature connection. Obviously, this is all processing, and even as I'm talking, I'm making more sense of it in, in my mind of, of what I feel is true and authentic to who I am. But if people aren't going to be necessarily desiring to go outside as much how can I best use my time and resources now to impact the world in a positive way and I'm not I don't know what that is I'm definitely going to do the the nature connection course, but 
what is it that that I need to be spending my time on? If the necessity for desk jobs, the necessity for going to college, the necessity for um, having business people, if that all goes away because of artificial intelligence, what am I going to do? And what's going to fulfill me and keep me wanting to go live my life. There is such radical things going on in the world. And if you're not tuned in, this is all going to happen and you're going to have no idea what's happening. You're just going to become part of part of this society and it's inevitable that we become part of it we are already so connected so reliant on on technology it's so I guess really the question is, what do we do with our time? Personally, collectively, how can we best use our time to impact more people? And what exactly are we we impacting them on? What are what is our mission? What are we trying to accomplish? talk so much about you know transforming your your gifts you know you're unique what can you bring to the table how can you manifest the dream that you want But what if we didn't have to dream? What if there's no need to come up with new ideas? Lastly, we had, I thought that was last, but it's not quite. We had a cacao ceremony, which is a specific kind of um, plant medicine. Cacao is the... um, is what coffee is uh, coffee chocolate is made from so we we drank this very dark and bitter chocolate chocolate with hot water cacao powder with hot water and then there was this really incredible uh, spoken word poetry mixed with music, mixed with a social message of how to um, how to live life, the importance of 
choosing yourself and impacting choosing to use your gifts to impact the collective not just reaching people who would necessarily access this information this this knowledge and knowing cuz being in this space here it's like we all get it being surrounded by entrepreneurs people who have who've chosen to live unconventionally, non-traditionally. We get it, but how are we taking our messages to then impact not just people within the spheres that we're in who already get it, but that we're impacting positively the future um future generations so that they can then live better more evolved lives and so i guess overall that that experience of being in the cacao ceremony with this spoken word poetry being played with music it was humbling it made me just feel that we are we are all connected we are all wanting the same goal which is to feel seen and validated and have some way to express ourselves that then can impact others whatever that may be. It's very powerful. I forgot another thing. So you can tell I'm I'm getting probably tired, but there's just a little bit more that has to be said. I experienced breath work for the first time. I don't know if any of you have experienced it, but it was incredible. And we closed our eyes. We there was music playing. We found a partner randomly with their eyes closed. And then we eye gazed for a couple minutes without saying anything. and then we started doing the breathing we were partnered back to back probably about 30 minutes of this breath work with um varying speeds and all i can say is that I totally zoomed out. I saw my life, I saw who I am. I experienced this feeling of just completely dissolving into the universe. And something I hadn't really experienced before and then after it the breathing work ended there just felt like there was this undeniable connection to this other person that I that I just shared this experience with and to me this other person was was me it was it was a mirror it was it was myself in you know another in another body in another presentation but it was still very much me we're not we're not separate we're not 
we're not isolated. We're all part of the same same human being experience. We're all we all want to feel loved, feel seen, feel heard, feel connected. And there was nothing that has compared to that experience of just I felt so connected to myself and to this other person that I also saw as a reflection of me, of my experience, and also so connected to the world and what what is needing to come through me to help better the the world. So a lot of thoughts over the last 48 hours have been processing and on top of that there's been so much business strategy that I've just been so immersed in all very good stuff I'm I'm grateful grateful to be where I am right now but I also feel uncertain as to where I need and want to spend my time. I want to create bigger impact. I know there's medicine within me that has the ability to heal thousands of people. I know what I have to offer is something of immense value and can transform people's lives in a really positive um, way. And so how it comes across in the next couple months, couple years, I'm not totally sure but the last two days have felt clear and different with a lot of options that I could explore and do with this life this knowledge this this consciousness this being that I've been gifted with And so I'm just going to end this here because it's past midnight and I'm a little tired, but my life has drastically changed. My understanding of my own gifts and how I'm going to bring those forward has also changed. And that, you know, it's easy for people to view whatever other people are doing and be like, wow, you know exactly what it is that that you want, but in truth, I have no idea what it is that I'm doing right now. 
Like, as much as I do know, there's so much I don't. And so just trusting the process and that if it's something you're meant to bring into the world, that it'll happen in its own time. That does not give you any permission to not bring forward your gifts and what you have to offer now as soon as possible. But I'm just allowing space for those who maybe don't have any clear vision right now to just honor that and know that you're in a creative space right now. You're in a space that has immense potential to change the world and you just don't know how you're going to bring that forward yet and that's okay you know we all go through processes you bring something big forward and then you have to tune in again you don't know what's next So I appreciate those of you who hung on the whole 45 minutes because it's felt really helpful to process in this way. I process like this a lot and You know, if I feel uncertain about something or unclear about a topic or how I'm feeling, I'll either write or I'll sit down and press record and see what comes up. And a lot of these videos are just for myself, but I envision this to be something that will just help help you gain insight into what exactly it is that I'm thinking about, the problems and situations, experiences, knowledge, careers that I'm exploring right now because there's so much technology and it's completely changing everything. being able to wake up and realize the change that's happening and to take a minute to to try to understand it could change your whole life. I appreciate you. I appreciate you showing up in this space. I, too, want you to feel seen and heard and validated. And so if there's something from me that I can assist you with, just ask. There's no harm in asking. We have such great resources and we we don't utilize them properly. We have networks of people who want to support us and yet we continue to push them away because we think A, I can do it by myself. I want to do it by myself. It's this egotistical feeling of just like, I don't need a team. I don't need investors. I don't need money to um, get my business going. I can do it all on my own. And while that's awesome, that's heroic, your messages, your medicine, your gifts need to be out in the world right now. They can't wait. They can't wait for 10 years for you to do it on your own. 
They need you to build a team, create a network of people that you can uh, reach out to for support, that you can, you know, offload some tasks to so that you can really bring whatever it is that you're, you're trying to, to create to better the world into it faster to create the transformation in other people so that they can then take their transformation to transform more lives. Time is now to step into that bigger role. Thank you guys again for listening and I shall touch base and chat with you soon.